Seven years ago, when I started working for an oncology team in a multinational company, I was introduced to the world of cancer. Very early on, I asked myself as to what is it about this disease that makes it so scary. Right? Upon further reading more about it and talking more to patients, I realized something very peculiar about cancer. It has a strange way of impacting every aspect of the patient's life. May it be their physical well-being, their mental well-being, their professional life, their social life, their family life, their financial identity. There is not an area of life that cancer does not touch. And that makes this disease very scary. I still remember the first time I visited a cancer hospital. I had gone there as part of my job and I was waiting there only to notice that there were over 50 patients diligently waiting to meet the doctor. Almost all of them were sitting with their family members. It was a pretty gloomy sight. And as an outsider, I noticed something very peculiar. I noticed that almost all of these patients had lost their hair. And I started asking why, right? And in order to do this, I went and spoke to a couple of patients. I asked them about their treatment journey. And soon, I, see, I saw a pattern emerging. Almost all patients, especially women, complained that hair loss is one of the most traumatic side effects that they experienced due to cancer treatment. Now, after talking to the patients, I wanted to get a clinical validation as well. So I wanted to talk to a clinician. So I went and spoke to an oncologist and I asked him, since you treat so many patients and when they complain about hair loss or when they express their fear of hair loss, how do you deal with it? To which he gave a very clear solution, right? And he said, to every patient who complains or says that they're afraid of hair loss and are worrying to get onto chemotherapy, he poses a very simple question. He asked them, do you want to choose life? Or do you want to choose your hair? Right? And the answer is fairly obvious for all of us. Right? But what he said next really got me thinking. He said, after he poses this question, there is always an abnormally long pause. During this time, either some patients answer, some don't, and some even end up breaking down and crying. So when I heard this, I knew that I was onto a problem that is worth solving. And uh, before I embarked on this journey, I had to first understand and validate whether this example was just an outlier or was it just the tip of the iceberg. And upon researching further, I found that it was the latter. Data suggests that over 8% patients refuse chemotherapy due to the fear of hair loss. Now here we are talking about life-saving treatment and they're refusing it because they don't want to deal with this. 72% patients feel that their social life is getting impacted due to this side effect. <coughs> hair loss caused by chemotherapy is also associated with depression. And not only that, what we think is a temporary side effect, there are instances where some patients experience permanent alopecia, which is partial hair loss for the rest of their life. Now, earlier what I thought was a cosmetic issue, a temporary issue, turned out to be much more. It had far more deeply entrenched problems in the cancer space, which is patients' mental well-being, psychological well-being, their response to treatment, and many other aspects. So with this knowledge and with this understanding, I thought that this is a problem worth solving, so went ahead with it, went ahead with solving it. Now, before I started, I did not have any experience in medical device R&D. Luckily, a couple of years ago, I was part of a workshop conducted by MIT and Harvard in IIT Bombay, where within a span of one week, in a group coupled with the best of minds, we were able to rapidly develop a prototype. Now, what that experience taught me is that it demystified the entire process of a medical device development. Earlier, I thought that it required R&D, infrastructure, budget, people, many other things. But this workshop taught me that, you know what, it is doable. To start, it's not necessary that we need to do it big. 
so with that confidence i set out on this journey to start and start making this device and in that process i encountered my first challenge which was the lockdown now after doing a lot of research i found that there is a solution called a scalp cooling therapy which helps solve this problem and which is the only approved solution and there are only two companies globally that manufacture this device i wanted to be the first indian company to do this and the third company globally to do this but the moment i set out on the journey to make this device the lockdown came into picture what i thought would be a one month two month challenge as we all know endlessly was prolonged now as a hardware company which relies heavily on components being shipped from different parts of the country lockdown posed a lot of challenges so it took me around six, uh, it took me around 6 months to be able to put the prototype together so after a lot of struggle after a lot of logistics coordination and work i was able to put this prototype together now arm with a business model and a prototype working prototype and with an entire plan in place i was confident to approach investors and i made had uh, you know with great deal of confidence and hope i went and met my first investor got rejected unfazed i moved on to the second investor got rejected again then on to the third got rejected so i started talking to some experts in the industry to understand why is this happening because i think this is a problem that everyone understands this is a solution that is not widely available despite of this why is it that i'm not getting the investment and then i realized there are two reasons there are two areas in the startup domains that are very difficult to fund one is the hardware startups which requires very high end initial investment has plethora of supply chain challenges and they are very difficult to scale unlike software companies and second healthcare startups where there is a long journey right from the prototype to the commercialization where the risks are fairly high and it is riddled with regulatory challenges and lastly it's very difficult to commercialize healthcare products now as you can see we had both of these qualities we were a hardware company and we were in the healthcare domain so in plain words none of the investors wanted to touch us so i nonetheless relentlessly pursued started talking to more and more investors both in india and abroad but unfortunately we were not able to uh, close the deal and uh, during the course of this life threw another curve ball at me right i found out that my wife and i were expecting we were soon to be parents now what was supposed to be the most happiest moment of my life was also coupled with a sense of anxiety and confusion now there is a lockdown the lockdown is still going on as we speak investors are rejecting the proposals i left my full time job to pursue this and there is a baby on the way and that brief couple of months i would say is one of the most difficult times of my life because it was psychologically and mentally the most challenging i wasn't solving the biggest problem in the world i wasn't doing something miraculous no i was just fighting my own battle in my own way and in this context i want to say it's extremely important to have a mentor so i had a mentor i was fortunate enough to have a mentor mr suresh subramanian who said that what you're going through in your personal life is something very beautiful right you get to experience it once in a lifetime don't let the uncertainties and the confusion of the startup merge both of them and boy was he right and he came at the right time to help me realize this and despite that i still relentlessly pursued after 80 plus rejections i was very seriously contemplating to pull the plug because i didn't see the point because i was slowly beginning to realize that maybe the product will not see the light of the day and as luck would have it one week after that our startup stemtech was one of the few chosen startups to get seed fund from the department of science and technology now that was a huge turning point for us within 3 months of receiving that fund we were able to manufacture the first batch of eva scalp cooling systems which are the first scalp cooling systems to made in the country and within 6 months of doing that we were officially ready with all the regulatory clearances to launch the product in india develop the first scalp cooling system third scalp cooling system which was made globally made in india completely affordable and accessible to the indian patients and lastly we had our proprietary own proprietary design that was patent pending now the point uh, despite all this in the 
span of nine months, we were able to reach multiple hospitals. The moment we took it commercialized, hospitals were literally waiting for this. And we had, uh, in the last three months, installed across three different states. And we are just starting. But however, when I look back at my journey and see, the happiest moment was when I got a call from one of the patients who says that access to this therapy helped them start chemotherapy with more confidence and less fear. Because at the end of the day, all the effort and the time that we put in is to positively impact the lives of the patients. So for those who are watching this talk, uh, who are interested in healthcare, I only, my only suggestion is this. Go spend time in the healthcare setting. Go observe and discover problems with your own perspective. Once you identify the problem, develop a vision as to how the world would be without that problem and relentlessly pursue till you achieve that vision. For us, at STEMTech, the vision is fairly simple. We want to ensure that every patient who requires access to this therapy should have it, both in India and abroad. And the next time, in the near future, when I visit the cancer hospitals, I want to see a picture of patients with a head full of hair, a smile on their face, and hopefully a little more confidence to get through treatment. Thank you.